their shrines to simple sins. Not the kind of sins you get sent to hell for, rather the ones to earn you stern words from health profesh. There are the chippies, the ice cream vans, the sweet shops and the pubs, clubs and bar. Saturated fat, shed loads of sugar in a sea of cheap booze. Get in. You're on your holidays. And let's throw in a little light gambling too, in the shape of amusement arcades, colored so brightly they all in all, a little bit of what you fancy does you good. So it is with a very heavy heart that I hear about them losing their high streets for good due to the pandemic. These are places that rely almost entirely on tourism, and with 44% of their businesses linked to hotels and B&Bs, restaurants and pubs, clothing and bookshops, they are taking a poll and it may soon be. These are places that have been in difficulties for ages, and COVID has obviously made things worse. It's vitally important to reflect these problems and address them. But in doing so we risk exacerbating the problem. Zombies wandering potential visitors to seaside towns are hardly going to be attracted to them if all they ever hear are tales of dilapidation. Yes, there are real difficulties to be found, but sometimes it sounds like we're talking of post-apocalyptic doom, with zombies wandering the street. That said, I have fallen out of bars on Swansea's Wind Street at 2 in the morning and found scenes not a million miles up. But I love these places and we have to celebrate them to protect them, as well as worry. People say these towns are sad to behold in winter, but I disagree. I actually like them just as much out of their melancholy rather than sad, and there's a difference. Better weather and better times, they say to us, we'll be back before. I once had a magical afternoon in a red car in January. I was in the town to see West Brom at Middlesbrough that I walked for miles along the beach and through the town, ate chips and drank beer and chatted to lots of people on my team even managed not to live. I didn't really want to leave. Stories from two seaside towns, Weymouth and Dorset and West Superman, Somerset, go to the heart of it all. I happen to have spent a couple of days in Weymouth just before meeting a newspaper photographer from there, who came to my place to take some pic. I told her how much I liked the town and how nice it must have been to I asked her why she had moved to London. She answered with a question of her own, what on earth would I do in Weymouth? While I took the point, given her line of work, it struck me that this is the issue facing many seaside. Just what do you do there if you live there all year round? If bright young people like her can't think of sticking around, there is always going to be perhaps our pandemic trauma, with all we've learned about remote working, could actually provide some solutions. It ought to make it easier to base ourselves where we'd like to live, rather than where we seaside towns could benefit. I'd be there like a shot. My Weston Supermare story comes from a friend who runs a fish and chip restaurant. One summer he noticed these four lads from Birmingham who came in for lunch and dinner every day for weeks on. It turned out one of them had won 10,000 pounds on a scratch card. Instead of doing something sensible with it, he did something deliciously daft. He called three of his mates and asked them to join him in Weston for as long as the 10 grand would last. The four of them shared a room in a B&B and, between visits to my mates Chippy, they made me, and why not? Seaside towns. May they go on, 